Hello Stormies and welcome back to the top 300 games of all time countdown. I want to start by apologizing for the lateness of the video this week. I've had a super busy work week and have not had any time to record. Today we are in numbers 40 through 31. Sorry, my cat's being distracting. She's sitting on my green screen on the part where it touches the floor. It may or may not fall during this video and you may or may not see it. Depending on where we're at in the video. When it happens, let's get started. Number 40. God of War released for PS2 in 2005. The original God of War reshaped the landscape of action games with its twisted version of Greek mythology an unapologetic embrace of violence. Kratos stood out as a flawed anti-hero, but swinging his flaming chain blades is what made the adventure shine. Stylish, responsive combat against legendary foes made every battle a visual feast, and the gory execution sequences, based on timed button presses, popularized a concept that persisted in game design to this day. Number 39, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Released for the N64 in 1998. For beloved series like The Legend of Zelda, major change can be dangerous. The ambitious Ocarina of Time not only expanded the scope of the franchise, but brought it to a three-dimensional plane with great success. Your first step into a sprawling Hyrule field was revelatory. As you explored on horseback or on foot, your experience was defined by your discoveries. Dense with interesting locales, oddball characters, and enticing secrets, Ocarina of Time provided a myriad of reasons to do more than just head to your destination. In addition to great controls for navigation and fights, it pioneered locking onto enemies and points of interest with its Z-targeting. Ocarina of Time not only thrusted the Zelda franchise into 3D, but it showed that it could do so without compromising on quality. Number 38. Starcraft released for PC in 1998. Blizzard's expertly balanced RTS brought tactical gameplay to the forefront and established one of the world's most robust pro gaming circuits. Number 37, Pokemon Red and Blue. Not doing gameplay or trailer for this one because last time I tried to do that with a Pokemon game, my video got blocked. Released for Game Boy in 1998, Pokemon is a massive international phenomenon, and it all started with these primary color entries. We met Pikachu and captured our first pocket monster right here. Number 36, Mega Man 2, released for the NES in 1989. All Mega Man games use the same basic formula. Fight robots, get new weapons, and use those weapons to fight more robots. Even so, Something about Mega Man 2 felt magical, elevating it above its peers. Maybe it was the cool robot masters like Crash Man devised before the, before the well of unique enemy ideas began to run dry. Maybe it was cool abilities like the versatile Metal Blade and Situational Time Stopper. Maybe it was the unforgiving Quick Man stage, honing our reflexes with razor thin margins for error. Mega Man 2 became, a, became an undeniable classic and set the stage for the franchise's future with pitch-perfect action and difficult but fair design. Number 34, Super Mario Kart, released for the Super Nintendo in 1992. Go-karts have had a disproportionately large imprint on the gaming industry, and Super Mario Kart is the reason why. Nintendo's cartoony take on the racing genre offered just the right mix of skill-based gameplay and pick-up-and-play fun. The addition of rival thwarting power-ups provided an enticing competitive wrinkle to races, and made battle mode a destination for multiplayer competition. Mario Kart remains a staple series for Nintendo, and it's easy to see why. Number 34, Resident Evil 4, released for GameCube in 2005. Resident Evil 4 wasn't just the reinvention of the survival horror series needed. Thanks to smart over-the-shoulder gunplay, it's also the first great third-person shooter. Resident Evil's switch to a more action-focused experience excelled. 
thanks to its focus on environmental objects you could use in a pinch, like barricading doors as well as smartly designed quick time event boss fights. Ghoulish charms and haunting encounters, with the standoff with the villagers at the beginning, helped preserve the series' horror roots. Even years later, the Spanish castle is still a compelling and creepy fortress to navigate. Like Games like Gears of War and Uncharted would eventually carry the third-person shooter genre forward, but Resident Evil 4 felt like a revolution for the time. Number 33, Donkey Kong. Released in 1981 in arcades. Before Plumbing and Princess Peach, there was Carpentry and Pauline. Mario would eventually go on to save worlds and galaxies, while saving time for activities like tennis and kart racing. But it all started at a humble construction site. The game proved to be a more than a fleeting fad, with a dedicated group of score chasers continuing to see who could jump, climb ladders, and even eventually ascend to the all-time leaderboards as captured in the documentary The King of Kong, A Fistful of Quarters. Number 32, Bloodborne, released for PS4 in 2015. Hidetaka Miyazaki and from software found something incredible by melding an aggressive take on soul style combat with two different flavors of rich atmospheric horror. The adventure that began with traditional Victorian ghouls and werewolves took a mind bending turn into cosmic Lovecraftian madness that pulled the tale into the darkest reaches of the imagination. The underlying aspects that made the Souls games amazing were at the pe their peak here. With incredible boss battles, stellar music, and environments ripped from surreal nightmares, not only was Bloodborne an incredible action RPG, it was also one of the best horror experiences to grace the world of gaming, an icor drenched dreamscape that lingers years after the final style, stylish slash was dealt. Last but not least for today, number 31, Battlefield 2, released for PC in 2005. The third entry of the landmark shooter franchise adopted a modern setting and took the competitive multiplayer action to new heights thanks to deep progression system, unlockable weapons, and a refined squad system that still serves as the teamwork focused foundation for the series today. DICE also introduced a built-in game recorder that let players capture the remarkable off-the-cuff battlefield moment. If you want to see more content like this, go ahead and subscribe. If you want to see me play any of the games mentioned, Leave me a comment letting me know which one, and I will definitely see if I can based on, you know, technology, whether or not I have it, whether or not I can get it, all that fun stuff. I have a couple of games to play that people have suggested from the series. I'll get to them. I just, I want to finish Stardew Valley, you know? Not entirely unreasonable, I don't think. Um... Once I finish this series, I'll be doing a Dungeons and Dragons series. Uh, if you have any campaigns in mind that you know of, let me know what you would like to see. I'm starting off with The Lost Mine of Phandelver, because uh, it's short, and it's my first time DMing. Uh, yeah, I'm also going to have a ghost hunting series coming up. I don't know what day of the week that's going to go on. But that'll be after I finish Stardew Valley. Anyway. If, you, if all that sounds fun, uh, yet another reason to subscribe, but only if you like the content. And if you like the video, leave it a like. I hope I'll see you next time. Bye!